Well, of course, the, uh, the Ukraine developments have meant that the, on the supply chain front, great disruptions to, uh, to, to shipping. Uh, and there are a couple of, a couple of major uh, exports that Russia has, palladium and aluminium, that are important to the chain. But Russia is only 25% larger than Australia, even though it's 140 million people. And of course, Ukraine is 10% the size of the Australian economy. Russia's role in that supply chain process, I think is fairly limited. Of course, the other big issue I mentioned before is energy prices. And there, of course, Russia is uh, very, very important. They're about eight to 9% of, of world production of, of oil, um, about eight to, eight to nine million barrels a day. Global, global output, about 100 million barrels a day. They're 30% of the demand for gas in Europe. So these are, these are big numbers. Now, one of the other big issues will be whether Russia will be able to maintain the flow of its energy exports despite the sanctions and the swift restrictions that are going on the Russian uh, entities, including the Russian financial system. Now, the White House has made it pretty clear they want those energy flows to continue, but of course there's significant political pressure. Canada has already decided to stop its imports of Russian oil, but of course Canada is not a major player. So that sits there as one of the big question marks. We've been fairly relaxed about the fact that uh, the commitment is so strong in, in the US and Europe to maintain those flows that a real spike in energy prices that would result from those flows being stopped is unlikely to happen. But it's something that we need to watch very closely. But finally, if, if we do see a higher and longer energy prices, then I believe that will certainly mean that the recovery back in inflation terms to those targets will take longer. But I think that we're still in shape to achieve that. And that will be the really big issue in terms of how markets will react.